Dear America's Perfect Housewife, welcome back to the Rumpus Room. The fam. <laughs> you know, my mom Taffy was a true Irish beauty. Dark hair, bright blue eyes, and later in life, bright blonde hair. Oh, she was a sight to behold on the tennis court, Taffy. Well, she was the ultimate glamorous suburban mother and housewife. Always dressed au courant, always knowing just what to do and what to say. Taffy? Ah, she was perfection. I remember the day that she announced that she was taking me to the Metropolitan Museum of Art to see the Monet Water Lily exhibit, and then to lunch. Oh, my dears, imagine how excited I was, a little girl like me, finally seeing the big city. Wow. So we put on our most beautiful traveling outfits and hopped into Taffy's fab yellow Mustang convertible, wrapped silk kerchiefs on our hair, and headed off to the train otherwise known as the Staten Island Rapid Turtle, <laughs> fastest train in the five boroughs, they say, that we hopped on the train and we finally got us to the Staten Island Ferry, best free ride in town. <laughs> we chugged across the mighty Hudson River while I enjoyed my first pretzel and root beer soda. Ah, then we were there, the big island of Manhattan. I was so excited. I took my first steps and suddenly mother declared we were taking a subway. Well, this was really an adventure. Hmm. So we went underground, we got on the subway, and we finally arrived at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I will never forget walking up those stairs, through those mighty doors. Of course, I dropped my quarter into the donation box at the door, and, well, the guard gave me my little button that said, I gave. I'm still a giver today. <laughs> and then it was off to see the Monet water lilies. There we stood. Staring at those paintings, I had never seen such beautiful colors and paintings. Lilac and purple, so lovely. Now, Taffy adored these colors. I mean, everything in Taffy's bedroom was lilac. The ceiling, the walls, the bedspread, the shag carpeting. She even had lilac potpourri. Mm. Oh, and then it was off to lunch. Downstairs at the amazing Dorothea restaurant. Now, does anyone remember the Dorothea restaurant? It was a glorious place with its oversized birdcage chandeliers and a uh, reflecting pool with bronze water sprites skipping across. Oh, a girl like me had never experienced such glamour, all designed by the amazing Dorothy Draper. Now, Taffy said she was ordering the perfect lunch for a blossoming woman in training. A rock cornish game hen. <laughs> Uh, she proceeded to teach me eating etiquette in public. That was the day she said that I was going to learn about being a proper grown-up woman. That was Taffy, my mom. <laughs> now remember, I'll have all my tips and recipes and stories on my website at www.dorisdeer.com forward slash girl, G-U-R-L hyphen talk. <laughs> oh, who could that be? Here, I have a note. Masks off! <laughs> <laughs> well, what a world, right? How's my lipstick? It's gorgeous, gorgeous. <laughs> We've been very safe. You know, we did our temperature checks and our testing and everything, so we can put those to the side mm -hmm. now. What a world we live in, right? I know, what a world. <laughs> Hi, Marie. Welcome to Hi. Doris Dears Girl Hi, Talk. Hi, Doris. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Marie Johnson Barouche. <laughs> Thank you. Very fancy. So... You're a big Broadway star, big, or was before so COVID, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you're from Australia. That's where it all began. That's so, take me back to Australia. What was your first sort of big break in Australia? Uh, probably uh, singing at my cousin's wedding. 
oh. when I was five. five. Was... <laughs> so many guests start at five. <laughs> I think that's when I got the bug, uh, maybe. Really? It's like, oh, this is kind of fun, you know, and, I, and it started from there in terms of singing. But the, the, the real professional break was Les Miserables. Oh, mm -hmm. what did you do in Les Mis? So I was, I started out as a swing and an understudy to Cosette. Wow. I was, I was very green. It was my first show. So you're green and you're a swing. That's like the hardest job in the world. Thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah. <laughs> that is literally the hardest. I, I think, don't know how people do it. Yeah. I, I don't think I knew exactly what it was when I went in. I was like, a swing. Okay. That sounds fun. And yeah, it was it was baptism by fire. Yeah. I think, yeah. Wow. But it was a great experience. I wouldn't have it any other way. Sure. And then I became an urchin after a while and then I, you know, did so many performances of Cosette and then it moved on and then, then Phantom after that. So, so Phantom, you were Christine. <laughs> I was Christine. We might have yes. a clip or a picture or something to show. <laughs> So how long were you in Phantom in Australia? So that started out, uh, I started as the understudy in those day in the early parts of the show, they weren't having alternates. Then they decided they would have an alternate. So I became the alternate and in, that was in the Melbourne season of Phantom of the Opera. And then in the Sydney season, I became Christine, took over wow. and did the Sydney. And how production. long did that run? That was about almost three years in Sydney. So. Three years. Yeah, two, three years. Wow. And then Melbourne was about three years. So it was a long relationship with the That's Phantom a long time. company. Yeah. That's fantastic. Mm. Well, I think we should cheers. Today we're drinking, this is a Doris Deer Pim's Cup. Oh, have you ever had a Pim's Cup? I have. Not well, for a long time, though. Here we go. Because it's I great. went to... I actually went to the UK and I went to Ascot last year. It was very fancy. Oh, nice. And afterward, everyone drinks Pim's Cup. Of course. So, and I loved it. So here we are. Cheers. Cheers. Here. Mm. Cheers. Yep. Oh, nothing that's like, great. Yeah, nothing like daytime drinking. Oh, I know. <laughs> I wish. Yeah. Mm, that's delicious. I remember mm. at the end of Ascot, everyone oh. gathers around the bandstand and sings all these songs, like thousands of people drinking pitchers of Pim's Cup. <laughs> it's like one of the best things that ever happened. So then you came to the lovely United States because you're actually married to an American who's mm. actually a Broadway lawyer, right? Yes. You're like yes. staying right in that lane. Yeah. But you're now <laughs> starring in... Phantom I'm on back Broadway. in Phantom, yeah. So. And pl n not playing Christine. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, that would be, yes. And no. what are you playing? <laughs> I'm playing Madame Jiri. Madame Jiri, that's fantastic. Yeah. I saw, I got to see her do it. It was <laughs> amazing. You're amazing. And how does it feel, how does that feel to like go back and then later in life go back to it and play this part? And you is it odd watching someone do Christine when... You, it was such a deep part of your early life in oh, theater. It's, I, it's kind of, it's, I feel very nostalgic about it. Yeah. You know, it's such a beautiful full circle because I, I know exactly what those, you know, young, fabulous actresses are going through with a role like Christine because it is one of the most epic roles in Absolutely. musical theater, I have to say, and the, the purity within your voice that you have to maintain, all those things and... And it, you're on stage the whole time. Eight shows a week. And the emotional journey of it all. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, it, and now that I'm older and more mature, um, I'm quite happy to leave that behind. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now it just, Madame Jury makes sense for my age and stage of life. So. Well, you're fantastic. You look amazing in the role. <laughs> and uh, we got a special backstage tour which was pretty awesome. And uh, you were so excited to show us like how beautiful the costumes were. She was, it was so great. They're beautiful. And they really are. And it's just it, like uh, yours. What costume, darling? I oh, wake I'm up sorry. like, there's no costume here, darling. <laughs> this is my normal wardrobe. Of course. <laughs> now, uh, I want to talk about something now in the COVID world, mm -hmm. your entire family, you, there was an article in the paper, mm -hmm. your whole family, you have two daughters, mm -hmm. So you, your husband, and your two daughters came down with COVID kind of early on, yeah. right? Yeah. And there was a big article in the paper. So tell me, like, I mean, that is like everybody's fear. We're so afraid right. of coming up positive and then 
what's going to happen. Right. So tell me about how that was really well, affected your family. I mean, back then we couldn't even get tested. So yeah. that was, it was at the height of it when New York, when the numbers were just escalating every day and people were hospitalized. So Broadway shut down on the 12th, on Thursday, the 12th of March, and we were the last show. So we actually do a matinee. Phantom does a Thursday matinee. Right. Which is very unusual. But we've been doing that for years. So we were the last show to go down. So during that show, we found out Broadway was shutting down. Wow. Because of COVID. Yeah. And, uh, and at the time, it was like, right, this is the right thing to do. It's to protect everyone. The virus is over there. It's right. Not, it's not here on our doorstep. And uh, that weekend, you know... Uh, it was nice to be with a family and, you know, we were just having dinner together. Yeah, imagine a weekend I, off. Exactly. <laughs> it was, the novelty was, was lovely. Yeah. Um, and I, f I must, in hindsight, I didn't feel so great that weekend, but I just put it down to being tired. The show had stopped, probably a little bit of arthritis in the body aches and pains. Sure. Um, and, but then on the Monday when my temperature spiked to about 101 at 11 o'clock mm. in the morning and I just went to bed, um, the kids were home and Jason was busy with work. So I just kind of disappeared thinking, no, it's not, it's not that. And then my daughter, Helena, came down with it two days later and she was knocked out for two days with the oh. temperature, just slept and, you know, and the headaches with it. And then it was Jason and then Audra oh. by Friday. So by Friday, it was it went through us so quickly. I've never had any, and you know, the kids get sick all the time, but sure. we've never had anything go through us so consistently with the same sy symptoms. And, uh, and by that stage, I think I called work and l told them what was happening just to say... I think right. we have it. We also happen to have a neighbour who is infectious, who is an infectious disease doctor, and he just said, "Stay home, do not go out. You must assume you have it, right. and you know, see if you can get tested." And we actually tried to get tested. Uh, we called up, and then they said, "We'll call you back." But because we were all, you know, on the younger side, no underlying health issues, right. and we we got through it. We were fine, you know. We did. Yeah. We completely lost our sense of smell um, and taste, and that was just before it hit the press. Uh. So I remember uh, texting my neighbour, the doctor, and saying have any of your patients lost their sense of smell or something and, and he was like no and then two days later he sent me an article saying it looks like that's one of the, thing, one of the yeah. markers of it so we got through it but then five weeks later that's when finally you know uh the new south uh the new south wales that's australia the new york <laughs> government called the health department saying you can have your covid test now five weeks later and we thought no, we'd, look, we've already had it. We know. Right. We found by that stage we knew we had the antibodies and things like that. But we thought, well, let's go and have it. What else are we doing? Let's go have a COVID test. <laughs> so we did a drive through and we were all positive. Oh, except for my daughter, one of my daughters. Wow. Yeah, so we were still positive five weeks later. Wow. But they say it's residual, yeah. you know, um, parts of the virus that are just left behind. Right. And that was that was a long time. That was back in May. I know, we're safe you know, now. It was we're early. All good now. Yeah, April, May. <laughs> So, wow, so what a journey. Thing. Yeah. But, what a journey. You know, we're, we're so lucky to have Absolutely. come out the other side. And now I'm giving plasma, which I, you know, it's, yeah. I feel if anything to do. Anything can help, help, right. I mean, I, I, I still sort of don't know, but maybe. Yeah. So, like, we're all looking ahead. Like, um, you know, all my friends are artists and how this affects us, how someone said to me with, with stages and theaters gone, who mm. are you as an mm. artist now? Because mm. your art is on stage and theater. So with it gone, who are you as an artist? And I thought that was a really interesting question. I mean, I'm, I've am i remade myself I don't know how many times over the 42 years in this business. But, I mean, that's part of your journey. But this was, like, thrust upon us so fast. Yeah. I mean, what, how are you feeling about your artistry? And, I mean, Broadway, that was a dream, you know, huge. How many auditions mm. did you have to call back? Did you go for for that part? Right. For I mean, Madame Jury? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was ongoing. I think I had to age into her, you know, <laughs> yeah. in the beginning. So, I mean, like, going forward, I mean, are you uh, 
I mean, Broadway will come back eventually. But, mm. Or are you just taking the time and saying, hey, we're good. I'm taking my time. and You know, it depends on the day. Yeah. Uh, you know, and as you said, how many times do we have to reinvent ourselves anyway right. in this business? Yeah. I mean, there are the blessed few who have those careers that just soar ahead. Um, but we have to keep reinventing ourselves and reinventing the wheel. Right. Now I think the technology is part of this. You know? Absolutely, because here we here are in the rockets room. <laughs> <laughs> like the lights. Yes, it's all it's um, good. So, and you have a karaoke mic, if I remember correctly, <laughs> in your kitchen. I do. I do. Leaning out the windows. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and you, we have to. I have to say, these are beautiful. These are called <laughs> Lemmingtons. Lemmingtons. This is an Australian. It is. It's, and this is the first time I've ever made them. I'm a bit embarrassed to say, it's the first time I've ever made them, and I, that thanks to COVID because I was like, see, trying to. You're you know, becoming a patissier. That, may, mm, that might be going too far. <laughs> well, I think we should try one of these as we finish up here and. Okay. Um, uh, thank you for coming to the Rumpus Room and to see oh, Doris my Deer. Pleasure. And thanks for having me. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's delicious. <laughs> Hi, Doris Deer here. I'm sorry to interrupt the regularly scheduled program, but I've got an important announcement and I wanted to tell you about it. Mark your calendars, December 19th, right here on Broadway On Demand. I'll be streaming from the Triad Theater right here in New York City, the Doris Deer Christmas Special. So come on in and meet some of my friends, hear some great holiday music, and we'll be telling stories of Christmas past and present. So check back here on Broadway On Demand for all the information and tickets. I'll see you then, and back to the program. Bye. Oh, hi. Welcome to the Bar Cart. This is the place where we make the cocktails we drink here in the Rumpus Room. <laughs> now listen, I was a very lucky girl and I was invited to the Ascot races last year. <laughs> what an absolute joy it was seeing all those people dressed in those big fancy hats in their morning suits. And there I stood as the Queen Mother and the Royal Family passed just feet away from me in their royal coach. Now, I'm sure that the Queen Mother waved right at me, darling. I mean, how could she not? It's Doris Deer, after all. But let me tell you, what was really marvelous was that after the races, everyone gathers around the bandstand as the band plays songs, and huge crowds of people sing along. And with those songs, well, I was introduced to the traditional drink, Pim's Cup. Oh, what a joyous day it was as I sipped my fruity, sweet libation, singing along with my wonderful Scottish friends and the thousands of people there. Now, history-wise, James Pym, the owner of the London Oyster Bar, invented the drink somewhere between like 1823 and 1840. The original version, though, featured gin, quinine, uh, various herbs, and it reportedly aided digestion. Now, the Sweet Libation is the signature drink of Wimbledon Tennis Tournament, where the first Pimm's Bar opened in 1971. <laughs> My childhood, darling. <laughs> uh, but it was also enjoyed widely across Britain during the summer months. Now, I would look this up in my, you know, my cocktail Bible that I love so much, the Esquire Drink Book, but honestly, it's not in there. I guess it's a modern drink. After all, the book was published in 1956. But so I have to go on my memories of the day at the races. But enough chatter. Let's create the Doris Deer Pim's Cup. Now, to a tall glass full of good, nice, cold, crisp ice, we add two ounces of Pim's Cup. And maybe a little more in there. Yes. All right, now to that, we just fill the rest with 7-Up. You could add any lemon-lime soda, but I like my 7-Up. And to that, let's see, we're gonna add a lemon, orange slice, cucumber, very fresh for summer, a strawberry. Well, look at that, my goodness, that's like a, that's like a fruit salad, and a little piece of mint. And there we have it, stir, Garnish, and you are ready to go. The Pim's Cup. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed your stay in the rumpus room today. You know, I love when friends drop by and we share some fun ideas and bring some joy to the world around us. Now, don't forget to head over to www.dorisdeer.com forward slash girl, G-U-R-L hyphen talk for all the recipes and hints from today's show. And I hope you'll drop by the rumpus room again for more of Doris Deer's Girl Talk. <laughs> Stay safe and hugs and love from Doris Deer. And remember, a dress doesn't get you anywhere. It's the life you live in the dress that matters. See you soon. Cheers, off to the races. Oh, now that's good. It's Doris. It's Doris Dear. She's that girl on the street. She'll show up with a sweet girl. Adore when she knocks on your door. There's a